Alright, we're just going to carry on with the camera for a minute. Probably need charging up soon. I thought I'd just carry on. I might be a bit quieter. Got the wind not right in front now. Some beautiful clouds. I've taken some pictures of them. Beautiful clouds. Seagull up there soaring high. Or it could be a hawk. This is beautiful though, isn't it? This is beautiful. It really is. To think I can see Western from here. Right over there, Western Hill Fort. There it is. They're opening up the inquiry. The family wanted it investigated again. The woman that was murdered 30 years ago, she was 66. She was walking two dogs. She wasn't far from a public path where other people were walking and she was stabbed and strangled. Um, it had been thought she'd befriended a couple of teenagers. Two teenagers were seen running away as well and they've never been found. So that they will now be in their 40s, 50s. And they probably, st they could even still walk in that wood knowing what they've done. And they killed somebody. It's amazing, isn't it? I walk in that wood all the time. Yeah, it's a nice pleasant walk this. Like I said, it is isolated. Do you ever see anyone? All you've got to just keep your eye on people, and there are ways you can get across if you have to. I jump a ditch if I have to. Comage is ahead. Through that gate there, and there's Comage on the other side of the river that we passed the other day. These videos would just join the others I've done, a continuation. Which I'm still, I'm still finishing off the wells to cheddar, <laughs> and I'm also doing family tree stuff, and I'm also doing England in the time of Richard the Third. It's the last week, and I'm really not going to have a lot of time. I have to do a bit in the evening because um, tomorrow I'm visiting Zara <sighs> briefly. I've got to take her a washing because she's not well. Then um, Wednesday, it's not until the afternoon, I'm going to Bristol on the bus. Saves all the hassle with parking and everything. Um, I'm going to Bristol on the bus to a bookshop, Foils. It's a precious a book, although I have put it in the basket um, online. And to have it signed by one of a woman called um, Mary Finnegan. I know it sounds like a joke, doesn't it? But he had a relationship with her. She was older than him. I don't know how much older, but she, he he lived with her when he first left home. She let him live at her place. Um, he then met Angie, of course, and then they went and moved somewhere else but I think he kept in touch with her because she's apparently she's written this book called um, Psychedelic Suburbia at, at the time at Beckenham and a uh, time when they were into their art and their music in the early days she was a part of his life she helped him in the beginning and uh, but then but Bowie met someone else like Angie he met lots of people then. <laughs> and, um, but she's written a book and she's doing a talk. There's also another woman who wrote another different book. Nothing to do with Bowie, but she's talking about her adventures up climbing mountains. Physical mountains. Geographical mountains. 
so that'll be quite interesting as well. So I'm going up to listen to these people talking and see if I can get my book signed because she's writing about David Bowie in the, uh, the very early days. It's a very expensive book though. Well, it is for me. It's 20 odd quid and it's a paperback. But because I'm collecting this stuff, I, I've got to get it, haven't I? So, uh, and to get, if I can get her to sign it, if I can have a signed copy, but how do I, I don't know how, I tried booking my place at the talk, but I, don't, I haven't received an email back. So I'll try again later, because that's like your proof that you've booked a place. I've, I've got two seats, because I had to book twice, because I, I haven't received no email. If not, I'm just going to turn up anyway. I'm going to turn up anyway. And I'll get my pension this week so I can buy the book. I've got quite a few books to read actually. I haven't been able to read. I've only sort of flipped through them at the moment because I've got all these other things. For example, I've got answers from Colin. I'm not going to do any more um, future loan for a year, I've decided, because it's taken me away from the tree work big time. Although I do class some of the stuff I'm doing as related to tree work, like the genetics courses, genomics courses I've done, even the history like Richard III, the Romans. I do class it in a way as part of tree. It gives you a good background knowledge of England. And, and well, the UK as we go back in time for, with our ancestors, you see. I'm just waiting for one uh, to come out. Uh, after the Battle of Hastings time. There probably is one. But I do need a break from that because... Uh, what I found, I had some very intense courses, the genomics one, were very, very, very intense and I had to really concentrate on them and really study them in depth. And uh, what I found, I loved the Hadrian's Wall one, I loved the, um, the Romans ones I've done, Portus, the family tree one I've done. But this, this one, I don't know what it is, I just don't feel that the tutors have got their heart in it. You never see them on there. They never make any comments. Um, so, from that point of view, I've, I've it's sort of, I've sort of lost a bit of interest in a strange sort of way. I've got all these walks. It's the summer now, anyhow. I've got one, one more week. I got one more week of Richard III, which was going to have to go on into the weekend. So I'm out today. I'll do a bit this, this evening. Mind you, I can, if I really want to, I could do it in. Oh, I could do it in a day if I really push myself the whole week. Because when we were students, we had to do a load of stuff. I remember the amount of workload we had. You know, it was nothing to go through, plow through ten books a day. You know what I mean? And articles and, you know, and drinking in the bar. <sighs> and I've been studying for years. I don't, it doesn't, it comes naturally to me. But it, I, 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 at the same time, it's, um, when I start feeling a little bit disinterested, it's time to break away. I mean, I was doing a doctorate in health, but it, it was so structured and so repetitive. Uh, I didn't feel I was getting the freedom I should have got at a PhD level to do my own stuff. It was too organized by others. Um, they were, it was a doctorate. Um, and I did, but in, it, not only that, what really hit it on the head was um, severe lack of money. Because all my other courses had been, I'd been funded. But um, I'd left the hospital, 
um, where I was working, so I couldn't actually, you know, that because they used to fund my work. But um, and it was very, very expensive, and I had to travel to Cardiff a lot and stay the night and everything. Um, yeah, it would have been all right, um, but. Uh, I don't know, I, it's just, it didn't work out. Uh, I, I didn't even like the sound of the course. It, it, it was... Oh, I don't know. Like I said, it was too structured. Right, now then, that's a little bit of a deviation on the walk. Coming up to Cummidge. Let's just check we're still... I can't always see. Yeah, we're still on. Coming up to Cummidge on the other side of the river. There's the Quantock Hills over there. Um, we're coming up to that creepy copse, I call it, where um, it's a sort of like a derelict place covered in barbed wire. I've got a feeling somebody stayed there in the past. I'm sure when I came last year there was someone in a caravan there. So... There was two cars parked, whether they've gone now, I don't know, where people were walking, probably doing the other walk, the other way. Yeah, you feel, I, feel, I can feel that I've done a big walk. I've done a great big loop right round and round. Brent Knoll coming into view now and Crook's Peak. I'm going to turn off for a minute because I want to take a picture of those two. Right, over and out. <laughs>